Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Catholic Coffee Talk, a podcast where in between sips, we answer your Catholic questions. I'm your host, Father Brad Doyle, and I have with me our resident good Catholic, Peter Gone. It is Lent, Peter. It is Lent. It, it is, is the Lent. Lenten tide, the Lenten season, the purple wearing purple season. <laughs> I was like, where are you going with that one? I don't know. I was, yeah. Wasn't there a song, Purple People Eater or something? Purple, but I decided oh, I don't know. to stay That's away from it. <laughs> there's Purple People Eaters. That There's the old Vikings team, I think, from the 70s. Mm. You know, up in Minnesota, they were the Purple People Speaking Eaters. Speaking of the Vikings, I don't like them. You don't like the, well, yeah, you shouldn't. They were terrible people. No, not not the actual Vikings. I'm talking oh, about the football oh. team. Oh, all right, yeah. So, so why don't you like the Vikings? You don't uh, you don't like just... Kirk Cousins and <laughs> Minnesota? I think he's is he still is he at the Vikings still? No, I, I just I had a, a horrible thing where they you know they beat the Saints once and a crazy t- tie. Do it. Diggs caught it and and yeah. Anyway, but it is Lent and uh, we are supposed to have some penances some uh sacrifices yeah almsgiving maybe a little little fast what is what is one of your uh lenten sacrifices so in terms of the sacrifice i'm trying to give up cheese this lent um i try to go to kind of the traditions last year i did no alcohol um uh, i thought about trying to do a full vegetarian Lent, but that's the kind of thing that really requires buy-in from the whole family. <laughs> that is that's that's true. That, look, Lent is important. Like you can't make your sacrifice everyone's sacrifice. Yes, so. and and my poor wife has some dietary restrictions, so cutting out all all meat is just it's just tough for her, and so probably won't do that one anytime soon. But I was like, well, I can cut out cheese and, and dairy, so I'm trying to do that. And then we got some you know more prayer routines we're trying to get into and stuff like that. So. But that's that's the main like sacrifice I'm doing. Yeah, you know the one I'm doing is I'm pretty pumped about it because I've always wanted to do it and and never worked out. But um, like could be committed to just using liturgical books instead of uh, like uh, online situations. So that's one of my things is this year okay. just you know like breviary. Um, yeah, you gotta have the physical. Got to have the physical presence of a breviary or uh, or even Bible, you know, like whenever yeah. you're going to give a talk or something. And instead of like pulling out your iPhone and reading scripture from your iPhone, which uh, I find is more co- more and more common. Um, there's something about the sacramental nature of holding something in your hand, you know. And so, yeah, it's just a little more rooted in I don't know, the physical reality, a little more rooted in, in yeah, your personhood. And- your embodiment. My, I like my, that. My breviary is, as you see, it's the only volume because they're set up in the four volumes. Right. The breviary for Lenten Easter is the only one that doesn't fit into my breviary cover. So I have to be extra careful. I mean, look, the, the binding's coming off. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's, it's a special penance, you know? You can't just throw it everywhere. You got to take care of it. You got to baby that's, it. That's neat. That's creative. That's a creative Lenten commitment. Thanks, man. Um, so you know, you know what? We need to be creative when we're answering questions too. Mm, and I mean, not, we need not to be creative, creative in in the ways that we segue from one segment to another. I wish I were more creative. <laughs> What's percolating? Where the questions percolating in your head get answers from the church's tradition. Usually, going to confession is uncomfortable and embarrassing. Even after decades of going, it usually doesn't get any easier. Furthermore, you probably haven't been taught anything about confession since you were seven, so your questions are still unanswered. Until now, in response to popular demand, we at Good Catholic have created a simple, straight-to-the-point mini-series that covers your most common questions and concerns, called Understanding Confession. There are six simple sessions, and we will give you confidence, peace of mind, and a new zeal for this sacrament. We'll give you tips on how to overcome fear and shame, the three things you need for a good confession, clarity on what actually constitutes mortal sin, and much, much more. So join us and our friend, Father Ken Geraci, to dive into this powerful sacrament of mercy. Click the link in the description or sign up today at goodcatholic.com. What do we have today? All right, we got a question from 
a young Catholic who is really just looking for some advice and some help. So I'm going to read this message that came in from Raven. I'm just going to make believe this is Raven from that. So Raven, <laughs> can I do that? I don't, I don't know if that's prudent because I don't think Raven Simone is 17. I'm willing to bet she isn't good point anymore. Okay. Another Raven. <laughs> All right. But Raven writes in and says, hi, I just wanted to say, I love your podcast. I've been trying really hard to find good Catholic podcasts. And I finally did. It's quite literally, this is a good Catholic podcast from good Catholic. So well done, Raven. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the good branding. Good branding. <laughs> well, we hope. Anyway, she goes on to say a little backstory before my question. As a kid, I'm only 17 now. I never went to church unless it was with my grandma a few times. I did vacation Bible school every year for like 10 years and church camp for about four years in a row. I haven't really had a relationship with God much more than that. So here's my question. I want to begin to better that relationship with him, but I do not know where to begin. I don't really know much about anything, and sometimes I feel stupid to ask people because I'm kind of scared. Thank you guys if you respond, and even if you don't respond, it always helps to say something about it. But here we go, Raven. We're responding, and I'm very happy to be doing this. I know. Awesome. This is great. Thanks for reaching out. I know it probably took a little bit of uh, I don't know, courage, maybe working yeah. up. Like, are they going to answer? Are they going to respond? Well, Raven, we're, here we are. We're responding to you. I personally would like to hear a little more of the backstory. So if everyone wants to like uh, email us back, I just like, how does someone who's only been to church a couple of times find it to the point where they're seeking out Catholic podcasts and there must be a right. deeper story behind that. And, and, and I think, I think conversion stories and how the Lord's working in people's lives is really interesting. So Raven, tell us a little bit more about that. If you want to, you don't have to, but, um, and then, uh, the first thing I want to say, though, to answer your question, Raven, is that um, it is important that you get caught up with the sacraments of initiation. I'm not sure if, yes. if you are. I, I just thought about that as as uh, Peter was reading um, the question, is that, you know, there's there's seven sacraments, um, and they're, they're broken up into different categories, right? So you have the sacraments of service, which are priesthood and marriage so those are the sacraments that serve other people like they're kind of mm -hmm. there to save other people in our lives <laughs> um and then there's the sacraments of healing which is confession and anointing of the sick and but then there's the sacraments of initiation so baptism so i'm assuming raven you're baptized if not you got to approach the the priest in your area at the church you yep. you've been going to or want to go to and and say hey I'm not baptized and I want to be baptized because what else is stopping me as the, uh, the eunuch said to Philip, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and then get baptized. If you are baptized, it seems like you might've been, you have that grandma that would take you to church every once in a while. Then, then have you received first communion? Well, if you've done that, I mean, you've been going to church a little bit, so maybe you've done that. What about confirmation? And so there's all these adult confirmation programs. Personally, we're starting one right now at, at our parish, and and um, it's just the, the as it's laid out right now in the United States, it's the final stage of initiation uh, to, to bring you into the church completely. So um, if you haven't done that, I think that would be a cool step. And then maybe they stick, maybe they put you as part of, depending on how much catechesis you've had um, as part of an RCIA program, or they put you in an adult confirmation program. Um, but both of those would kind of address a great need that I think you have, which is community, right? You can't, yeah. You can't walk uh, the Christian faith, uh, much less the Catholic faith, alone without other people. It's kind of the it's it's one of the things the church. It's like the right. the people of God, and so and so you need to find some sort of community in a stable uh, church, and so you can reach out um, to to the priest in your area or one of the ministers, maybe the secretary, and try to find um, if you need some of those sacraments. Yeah, I think that's that's a great place to start. And I would also add kind of within that theme of getting caught up, um, I would just encourage Raven to look at some, I don't know, what I would consider basic catechesis, just some stuff about like the precepts of the church, what we believe, you know, it, uh, about God in terms of the Trinity, in terms of the incarnation, in terms of what Jesus did on the cross, why he died for us, 
um, you know, why you need the sacraments, why you should go to confession, you know, what the Eucharist is, kind of just some of those uh, central doctrines and dogmas, and just do, do some learning, do some reading. Um, you don't need to do a lot of research or a lot of intense study to get the basics. And it's important to get the basics because as you continue to search, and you should search, you should ask questions, you should be looking for truth your whole life. But as you do that, you're going to come across a lot of weird stuff, and you're going to come across a lot of wrong stuff. And especially, I mean, it sounds like you don't have a lot of people immediately around you who uh, are necessarily encouraging your Catholic faith, because it sounds like it's a little hard to get to church, and you're kind of scared to ask the people around you, and, and that's okay. I, I don't want to speak to that situation, because I'm not sure kind of what that situation is, but mm -hmm. um, as you ask for that, if you don't have people right kind of at hand that you can really rely on, um, there might be, I don't know, just some, some not-so-great ideas out there, and it's important to know the basics so that you can be on the lookout for red flags. I think, you know, because I've, I've seen people who are teenagers who want to find truth and, and then, um, you know, next thing you know, they're, they're Buddhists or they think that all religions are the same. And there's no difference mm -hmm. between them um, or they're, they're relativists and they're talking about my truth and, and your truth. And as long as, as long as it's yeah. true for me, I don't need to worry about, you know, living according to any kind of laws, or rules or, or moral life and and I just, I would hate for that to happen. Um, and I hate well, for and, to, and, to, you know, to get lost. social media, I mean, we don't know. Christianity isn't necessarily perfectly represented by like social media or TikTok or right. whatever. And I'm thinking you're 17, you probably have a TikTok. Um, and, and the Catholic Church isn't necessarily perfectly represented mm -hmm. on these platforms. It's not the official teaching. Now, maybe you find some awesome people like on Catholic Twitter or something, but even that's kind of dangerous sometimes. Um, one book that I want to give you, Raven, as, a, as an idea to, to kind of go down is a book uh, that we use in our RCIA program. It's called Unabridged Christianity, um, and it is written by Mario P. Romero. Okay, Mario P. Romero, and it's kind of a reference, unabridged uh, Christianity, meaning like uh, f the fullness of Christianity. It's not right. like this abridged take, and, and ultimately the Catholic Church is the fullness of that Christianity, and so that would be a cool place to start. It's got a lot of references to Scripture, obviously, the Catechism, and the different basic teachings, fundamental teachings, almost like ground one, uh, level one on that. That's why we use it for RCIA. And then also, Raven, I do want to say that, um, oh, I'm on the wrong one. Okay. Um, you know, you are 17. And so are you like still in high school, you know, and so you're probably still under your parents' roof. Um, and so it, that changes your opportunities whenever you like leave and go out into the world and get a job or go to college. And so I think a cool opportunity is to, if you're going to college, um, then join the Catholic Student Center wherever you go, wherever you end up. Um, if you're not going to college, if you're just going out into the working world and doing that and uh, maybe staying home with your parents for a little bit, um, you got to find a parish. And so maybe yeah. there is a youth group uh, at a parish near you because you're 17. You're like still able to uh, go to youth group. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an old geezer priest like I, i'm not <laughs> i'm not hip with the utes if you uh as as you say but let's, um, let's be real father you're hipper than me <laughs> well my hip hurts that's that's the only hip i have um but but yeah find that parish you gotta have mm -hmm. community so like uh start showing up especially during lent they usually have parish missions um yeah. go check that out check a parish mission out uh go to a, try to find a bible study as part of the parish or go to like an adoration night mm -hmm. maybe they have usually parishes offer a lot more things confession and things like that stations um, of the cross are really popular during Lent. you know what you know what stood out to me when i was in high school like it was a moment where i realized okay I think the Lord's doing something in my life is um, the year, like my junior year. It's the first year I went to the Triduum. 
like my parents, you know, we'd mm-hmm. always go to Easter mass, but we never went to the Triduum Raven. You know what the Triduum is? It's, it's the three days uh, leading up to the Easter vigil. So it's like good, it's Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then Holy Saturday ending with that Easter vigil leading us into Easter. So it's the three holiest days of the year. And um, so it's kind of this one big long mass over three days. You kind of take breaks. But um, I remember taking it upon myself my junior year to show up at all three of the uh, Triduum services. Yeah, services. And it's a cool little, I don't know, uh, like a challenge to you. Like, Raven, can you show up? And then you meet like the who's who in the parish, right? You meet like the people who are like really involved in the parish. It's not just the every day like, oh, it's on Sunday and we go into mass. It's like these are the sacristans and the altar servers Mm -hmm. and the people training the altar servers. And like the priest is going to be like, oh, who's this young person like out there? I know if I saw a 17-year-old by themselves at the Triduum, I'd be like, Okay, solid. Need to talk to that person. <laughs> so I think that would be a cool way to show up at the holiest part of the church calendar. Raven is at the Triduum. Um, so, I mean, that that's a good idea, right? I think that's a phenomenal idea. And aside from community, that's great. Uh, I mean, Raven asked about building this relationship. That's a great way to better the relationship with with our Lord. Because, I mean, that's the the pinnacle of what he did for us. In, in salvation. And if you go to the vigil, depending on uh, the the proclivities of the given parish, you might hear all of salvation history from the beginning of the Bible up through the New Testament. Or you, you might hear, you know, you know three readings or, or, or all seven or whatever it is. I know different it's parishes like worship different or ways. You can, yeah, it's... You, can, you can get nine readings, uh, not to scare your way, Raven, but that Easter vigil, <laughs> like, like you're going to want to you know, uh, drink some coffee beforehand and get out there because it's the whole shebang. You're going through all salvation. It's the whole salvation. story. Yeah. So uh, at the Abbey, we used to um, have this almost a – it was a keeping watch with the relics of the true cross. So Good Friday, we'd go Good Friday. So obviously there's the keeping watch of the Eucharist for Holy Thursday, right. and then we'd repose the Blessed Sacrament at midnight on you know Good Friday morning. And, um, and then you wouldn't have the Eucharist in the tabernacle and then you'd have the good Friday service, you'd receive communion and then they would put out the relic of the true cross. And then all through the night seminarians would be, this is a college seminary. So it's our, our, our yearly retreat was during the Triduum. And so you'd keep watch. And I took like 2 AM to 3 AM every year. Um, and I would go camp out in the woods on good Friday night or I guess holy Mm -hmm. Saturday morning and that was the scariest thing ever was walking through the woods at night going to my little vigil and I remember it was the reading um, from um, it was like the prophets of Baal and Elijah throw down on on Mount Carmel and it was like it the, the reading ended with and then he brought them all down to the wadi and slit their throats yeah, and I, and it's I'll, an intense reading. And, I, and an I was like, reading. by myself, reading that out loud to like maybe two other seminarians <laughs> in the in the Abbey Church at like 3 a.m. And we just turned around and just knelt down and prayed. And I was like, ah! and then I had to go walk out into the woods. <laughs> very, very quick tangent story. I remember I was teaching Totus Tuus, which is a like a summer, pro- it's a vacation Bible school. You know, like like Raven mentioned, right? I was teaching a vacation Bible school for a whole bunch of kids, and uh, we had daily mass. And the priest where we were, you know, would say daily mass for a lot of these little kids who were like, you know, second grade, third yeah, grade. Yeah. And that's the reading. And um, that was the reading. And it was we we're going through whatever that was, Second Kings or First Kings. Yeah, I think it's Second Kings. Yeah, and so it was all this Elijah and and Jezebel and and King Ahaz and all that stuff. And uh, it got to that reading and. The priest just ended the reading one verse early, I think, where like the fire came down and, you know, mm-hmm. the, like God proved himself. And then then like the last line is like, and then Elijah sees the servant or the sees the priests of Baal and, yeah, you know, slit their throats. He just, he just like, he just stopped the word <laughs> of the Lord. <laughs> Weak. No, I'm <laughs> He might be prudent. I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, well, I didn't I didn't stop. It was just us seminarians. I figured we'd, yeah. we'd keep it going. Yeah. But it is cool. We w- basically went through all salvation history. And that's the point, Raven, is what we're pointing out, is right. that you get like an overview. So if you feel like you maybe need a refresher, um, you'll basically be hearing from here on out, all through in Lent, leading all the way up to that Easter vigil, like God's work you know, in salvation history. And what is salvation history? It's the the story of God saving us, like us messing up, not being able to do it, him making another covenant, us breaking that covenant, him making another covenant, us yeah. breaking that covenant. And so in you participating in that. And so I'm glad you're here. And then and that's the really the last thing I put down to say was I would say personal prayer. How do you build a relationship? Well go to a mass, receive the sacraments if you need uh you know, updating on those sacraments and f- fullness of initiation, but personal prayer time, wake up 20 minutes early every day and read a bit of the gospels and just start with the gospels. Don't start too fancy. Don't like read revelation. Okay. Like right. that's like always <laughs> classic mistake is like, I'm going to get into revelation first. Yeah. It's like maybe, no, don't do that. That's a little confusing for even for me. And I'm a priest of Jesus Christ. Okay. So <laughs> Let's start with just the Gospels, um, right. maybe Matthew. This is the first one. Just open up to Matthew. Yeah. He's got some cool stuff in there. Yeah. No, I think that's that's really good advice. Just take that time just a little bit every day. Uh, and reading the Gospels is great. The only other thing I want to kind of add on, and this is inspired by something I heard around the time I was 17, and it made a big difference for me, and so I want to pass that on a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy kind of pointed out, he pointed out to a few of us, I think it was at a talk at a parish, but he was like, you know, at, at 17, George Washington was already like leading soldiers out in the wilderness of Pennsylvania and uh, all this other stuff. And he, and like, he just went on and on about how like in history, adulthood came fast, basically. Mm-hmm. And the main point of what he was trying to say is that even at 17 or at 16 or even at 14, you feel like a kid. And in some ways, you're not wrong. But you already have the power to start setting up the trajectory of your life. Mm -hmm. And the choices you make now at 17 do matter. So take them seriously. You know, we're talking about finding a parish or, you know, when you go to college, finding a Catholic student center. Make sure you think about that in your discernment if, again, if you're going to college or not. Um that where you go, you'll have the ability to keep this faith alive. Like it does, it does matter. I saw a lot of friends who just said, well, I know I'll, I'll be Catholic no matter what. Like it's, it doesn't really matter. And then they wound up not having any community and sure enough, five years. But after that, you know, a lot of them aren't that serious in their faith. And it's sad because they didn't necessarily take that seriously. And they didn't quite realize that the, the choices they made, even when they still felt like a kid, still set them up for the rest of their life. And so I say that not to scare you, Raven, but to empower you. Say you have the ability to make commitments that can change your life and can find freedom in Jesus Christ. And it's up to you to to sort of feed that fire in a good way and to, uh, to embrace that and to follow him, begin your discipleship because, because it does matter and it's a life worth living. And you don't have to wait until you're older or bigger or wiser or anything like that to to really to really embrace him and live a good life. Absolutely. Great advice. Raven, just keep going, keep walking forward. By the way, the uh, seminary that I was talking about earlier, guess what our mascot was? The Vikings. The Ravens. <laughs> Ravens. Yeah, because Saint Benedict, Saint Benedict is a Benedict. Saint Benedict is the Raven. Yeah. So go go look that up, Raven. Uh, go go look up Saint Benedict's story about the Raven. Um, you you saved Benedict's life. Good job. <laughs> Thank you from the the mean monks. Um, you know what, Saint Benedict that day when he when the monks tried to kill him, he probably needed a little pick me up. Probably needed a little pick me up. Bean of the week. We all need a little pick me up. Here's ours. Uh, so I have a pick me up. I'm going to start for no apparent reason. Um, new artist, new musician. Name. All right. Well, your last your last pick me up was on point. That Ben Rector song was great. Oh, okay, good. I thought you were going to say it was Andy Gullahorn. 
So very <laughs> similar to Andy for, to Ben Rector, same kind of genre. Well, uh-huh. it's different. He's a little more singer songwriter. Ben Rector at this point is like '80s jams. Okay, but like. This guy, so both my friend Adam and the pastor, and the Presbyterian pastor in town, um, my golfing bud, Ben Shaw, he says, he tells me Andy Gullihorn, look up Andy Gullihorn. So I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, people tell you that all the time. They give you music suggestions. Mm-hmm. It has blown my mind. I haven't listened to one song that I did not like. And there was a song by Andy Gullihorn that I'm going to just put out there for you. It's called Any Less True. And why I like it is because Andy has a good, uh, he does a good job of not just expressing the highs of Christian life, uh, you know, of following the Lord, but also like giving words to moments where it's like hard to believe and there's doubt and like he's almost this apophatic uh, Christian writer. Again, he's not. Uh, a a Christian he's not trying to write Christian music he's just like a Christian himself so he writes Christian music because that's in his heart and um so the whole song is about like my feelings might say one thing but it doesn't make it any less true even though I feel a certain way or I might Mm -hmm. have these doubts or uh, one of the lines is and he's a great songwriter you know why why I know this is because every one of his songs is a theme and each of the verses kind of just go around the theme and different perspectives. So it's almost she starts with the theme where uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't write like that. They kind of just meander. But he so the, the, the theme is any less true. And there's one verse in it, and it's um, for people who have had a miscarriage. And he says, I heard a promise. Um, it echoed in your womb. And though uh, I heard it loud and true, it echoed in your room, though I can't hear the promise anymore, but it didn't make it any less true. And and Mm -hmm. so, man, how many people have I, uh, have I walked with and have come to me and who have experienced, um, something so hard that I didn't have anything to give them. And now, and now I'll say, look, go listen to this. I think this will, I think you're experiencing something on this, this level where, where you be, you're in desolation right now and it's okay. It's okay, right. and the Lord's with right. you in it, and um, it doesn't make it any less true. Yeah. So I, that's that's I know that's great. It's it kind of sad, but but uh, but it's good. It's good. So uh, go listen. Any less true by Andy Gullihorn, which by the way, there's this also this awesome story about Andy and his friend who were musicians together. Did I tell you this story? I don't know if you did. They're musicians together. They would play uh, like a Christmas concert and they were best of friends for three weeks every uh, winter. And then they would Uh never see each other again. They lived like a mile from each other. And so they decided one year, okay, every Tuesday we're going to text, you know, an emoji of a, you know, high five. And we're going to just walk a half mile, meet in the middle, high five, and then walk home. So they started doing this and it was kind of this stupid, funny thing, but uh-huh. then they just, every Tuesday, no matter what, it was raining, right. they, it snowed in one year and they like sledded there together and they high-fived and then they couldn't talk one day, they, they were too busy, so they just did a silent high-five where they just high-fived and then just walked away. Uh-huh. Um, and you're like, okay, so it's this idea of like showing up no matter what. Right. This very sacramental thing of, of just like the nitty gritty everyday showing up right. of like the sacraments, right? And then one of them, not Andy, but the other guy, had a major brain injury or he had encephalitis and he got into a coma. And then when he came out of the coma, he didn't remember anybody. And then Andy shows up, okay, and he looks at him on a Tuesday and he says, hey, do you remember who I am? And he's like, no. And he goes, I need you to do something for me. Just give me a high five. And he's like, okay. And right when he hits the high five, he does the special snap thing that they did. And he remembered who he was. <laughs> he remembered who he was, dude. That's like, great. Straight up. It was this deep like thing inside that just welled up and like, and, and, and man, that's cool. That like something so deep, so simple could be so profound for someone that would like snap him out of something like that. Yeah. So that's, that's amazing. That's a cool story. Andy Gullihorn high five. Go look it up. That's, that's really cool. What's your pick me up? 
My pick me up. I've been on a Fulton Sheen kick lately. Um, and I think I'm mentioning him a lot more on the pod, but I wanted to again thinking of Raven. I just wanted to tell everyone that you could watch. I think all of Fulton Sheen's TV episodes on YouTube. Yeah, they're and up they're, there. They're great. So good. They're so good. I mean, his writing is incredible, and I I tend to pour through his books whenever they're remotely relevant to what I'm working on. Um, I look for an excuse to read his stuff, but uh, even just watching his his stuff on on YouTube is phenomenal. So it's it's easy, it's approachable. You can have it on in the background if you want, and it's as relevant now as it was when it first aired, man, seventy years ago. Some of this stuff. So first televangelist, one yeah, an, one an Emmy. As a bishop, what? Well, yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he had the best TV program in America as a Catholic sitting Catholic cardinal. It's phenomenal. Pretty, pretty sick. Go check him out. Yeah, and it's as engaging as engaging as you'd think. You think, oh, some guy with a chalkboard on TV? No, thank you. That sounds boring. It isn't. I thought it was boring, and then I watched it. It isn't boring. <laughs> you know, so they, they, there was this guy in New Orleans that used to get Nash Roberts. I think was his name. He uh-huh. was a he was a weather guy, and you know, even after all the fancy other weather guys like pushed him out of the business and stuff, every hurricane they would get Nash Roberts back with his chalkboard. <laughs> They'd be like, you know what, Nash, you you tell us, and he you would tell just, us what's happening. Yeah, he would just nail it. You know, just yep. You bring in the ringer. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Fancy kid with the the computers, get out of here. Nash is gonna save us. I like that. Anyway. That's a good pick-me-up. You've been listening to Catholic Coffee Talk with me, Father Brad, and our resident good Catholic, Peter Goan. Coffee Talk is brought to you by The Catholic Company and is part of the Good Catholic Podcast Cooperative. If this episode has blessed you, you can find more content at goodcatholic.com. As always, we ask you to leave a review, a rating, share the pod with a friend, or simply pray for us and our mission. If you have a question of your own that has been percolating, Shoot us an email at askapriest at goodcatholic.com, or you can leave a voice message at speakpipe.com slash Catholic Coffee Talk. We might feature your message on a future episode, and we'll answer all your questions to the best of our ability. To quote the psalmist, taste and see that the Lord is good. Continue to drink deeply from our great faith. We'll talk next week. Bye.